You know what I say to my mind? Now, you! Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. Minions The Rise of Gru It was a long-awaited release, being the sequel film to 2015's Minions. Of course, there was excitement for the film's release, partly due to the internet meme culture, but also due to the now-older age of the first film's main audience, who managed to put Minions 1 into the $1 billion club back when it came out. And so, with the perfect time and place for a release, Minions 2 premiered at the cinemas, made a whopping $870 million worldwide as of this video's posting. But Minions isn't the only kids movie to come out recently, and yet it's one of the year's top 5 largest releases. No matter what movies manage to push it down, Minions 2 is still at the top of box office charts. So why is that? Why does Minions, and the Despicable Me franchise as a whole, consistently shatter expectations year after year? Well, it has something to do with the nature of Minions as a group of characters. Something that Universal manages to nail every time we see our favorite yellow characters on screen. Before we get into the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and check out our website for all things lifestyle. Without further ado, let's get on with the video. Minions 2 understood the majority of their viewer base and their wants and needs as consumers. The film rarely had any childish vulgar jokes as the one prior to it, which is a massive upgrade. Furthermore, the jokes that did present themselves throughout the film were actually funny. There were good references that older people can understand, and they too were pretty funny. As for character development, there was a decent amount of it. There was enough change from the film's start to its end within Gru and Wild Knuckles that when things went wrong, we, as a viewer base, were genuinely shocked and intrigued. There was an actual connection between the pair, and you can see massive change with time. It went from a kidnapping to a genuine father-son dynamic. It didn't feel stupid or rushed or out of place, it felt very natural. Gru saves Knuckles' life, so Knuckles decides to teach Gru some of his stuff, and the two become best buds. It was simple, but well executed. The same goes for the minions, by the way, or namely the four that the movie focuses on, Kevin, Bob, Stewart, and Otto. The four endure grueling challenges of their own throughout the film, and we even get to see a Clinton Tarantino-style karate montage in between. However, they still have the same personalities from film one, which is actually a really good thing. They're characters who wear their feelings and thoughts on the outside, which makes them both fun characters and easy to understand for children. When it comes to the cinematography and animation, Minions 2 displayed high-level skills. The film wasn't characterized by annoyingly exaggerated movements, as most children's movies of today are. Instead, things felt better this time around, which is yet again Universal taking their viewership base into account here. Things felt legitimately viewable, unlike certain movies. But review aside, let's get to the nitty gritty. Why did Minions make such a comeback in the public's attention? For the longest time, I remember everyone hated the Minions, so what happened? Well, the reason these yellow goggled blobs have become so successful and loved is because of their nature as characters. Minions are mindless humor done right. I don't mean mindless in the way that characters in most modern day kids movies are, stupid characters meant to push the plot further. I mean mindless in a way that they're fun. They're characters that although are stupid at times, have some degree of cleverness to them. They're able to escape through tough situations. They're capable of thinking, even if it usually ends up going wrong. They feel and display their emotions in different ways, and at many points throughout the run of the Despicable Me franchise, they actually go through emotional struggles. You see, minions aren't just comedic additions. They're not just there for the sole purpose of making children laugh, even if they've become Universal's largest marketing tool. They're actual characters. They have shifting personalities, dynamic traits, and a genuine backstory. They can make connections, and all of this is done actually well, while speaking a fake, incoherent language. It's pretty amazing. And so, it's actually no wonder why people like Minions so much nowadays. They've transformed from the glorified butt jokes they once were to real characters. This is not only a good thing for the film's older base, as we're now seeing, but also for their younger base, who can genuinely get engaged in the story of well-written characters. This, I think, is also partly why children liked the new movies too. As much as the minions are comedic, they're also fun to watch. Seeing the minions discover new ways of going about strange situations that the average person doesn't go through, all the while learning, growing, and changing is very entertaining. 
I can imagine it's also more fun to watch for children, versus the completely mindless animated protagonists on screen nowadays. And so, that's what Minions 2 gets right as a kids movie. It has all the proper elements of a film, but conveys them in a childish manner. It reminds me of movies from back in the early 2000s that our generation grew up on. These weren't just stupid films for the sake of being funny for children. They had real messages, ideas, and stories, but were able to cleverly showcase them in a way that children liked. They utilized all of the proper filmatic elements, but conveyed them in a child-friendly manner. Minions 2 not only pays homage to this style, but also executes it wonderfully. And so, it's no wonder as to how it did so well in the box office. Thanks for watching the DZSH group. If you like this kind of content, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment your thoughts down below. Until next time, this is Sammy Youssef, signing off.